Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to a brand new video. And today we're going to be rebuilding Barcelona, obviously a team in real life, which having some financial issues at the moment, but this is going to be our job now. We've got five seasons to try and, you know, get rid of some of the higher wage players, possibly move on some older players, bring in some youth, possibly bring in some free players if we can. Before we get into this though, guys, please drop the video a like, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. There's tons of content coming your way, but let's get into the first season of the transfers. So let's get into the first season and shall we of the transfers. But before we do, I hope you guys do enjoy the light and we've got here and over there. I did see a few comments saying that it was a bit dull in the background. I'm not necessarily dull, just not a lot going on. So I've got a couple of the lights. I'm going to try and keep the colors as themed to the club that we're rebuilding around or that we're playing with. I so, you know in this one, this one, this more looks like a pink, but it is set to purple, like a sort of burgundy color. But for some reason, it's coming up as pink. I'm also going to get, you know, a few framed T-shirts on there, make the scene a little bit more football manager sort of related, you know. But let's get in to the first season of the transfers. So the first player we actually did bring in, which wasn't ourselves. We're going to we're gonna briefly talk about the ones which the board made or Barcelona made in real life. So obviously, we bring in Depay, we bring in um, Pedro Lebert. Um, a few people I'm not going to read. Obviously, Fernand Torres was the most recent one, which we spent a lot of big money on. We then got a Bamiyang on the free, obviously, Griezmann for eight and a half million, who is on loan again at Atletico, a player which I might look to offload if he doesn't have a good season there because his wages are high and he's getting old. And um, we then actually managed to bring in Paul Pogba, Dybala, Kessi, and Zagadu. All on the free. This signing was done for us as well with Demir. But there's three world-class players there and one up-and-coming defender who's got a ton of potential. We then also sign Luca Nets for a fee of about 10 million. Now, this guy is just a good left-back when it comes to growing. He's not there yet. But the whole point of this is bringing in players that aren't actually on a lot of money per week and developing them as players. Because as you can see down here, I'm not going to go through everyone that the club decided to offload because there is a lot of people. Um, obviously, you know, you can see like Lionel Messi and that go there. Um, Royale, Griezmann, um, Mareba, who is a fantastic player. Coutinho. Uh, but also, I did decide to sell Busquets and Alba for two reasons. Um, the first reason was they are both aging. And two, or the second reason, should I say, would be because they were on a decent amount per week. And I don't feel like they, they wouldn't accept new contracts on a reduced rate because a lot of players that are short on contract, I have tried to offer them a new contract to get that wage down, which I have done and been accepted by the likes of Memphis Depay and a couple of other players. Now, the reason I've not sold, I am trying to keep it um, as realistic to what you see in real life. So, for example, I wanted to bring in Christiansen because obviously that is pretty much done in real life. Same with Marcus Alonso. I couldn't attract Marcus Alonso and Christiansen actually was a free agent on this game and picked PSG over me. So I couldn't get him, which is a shame. Now, the reason I've not sold De Jong is because he probably isn't going to go to United. I, I really don't know. I, I can't imagine them actually going through with it, unfortunately for me, because I'm a United fan. So that's the reason why we've still got him. If we go into the tactics, then I'm going to be using RDF's Javi tactics. So shout out to him. Obviously, one of the best YouTubers when it comes to making tactics. And I just thought, you know, Barcelona, Xavi theme tactic. I've not made, you know, a Xavi tactic before or a sort of, you know, base tactic. So why not test it out? See how it does in this rebuild. So that is going to be the team. So as you can see, or well, Griezmann's actually, we can't even use Griezmann, I don't believe, because he is on loan at Atletico Madrid, as I did mention. So we'll put, um, the sake of this, let's just do this. So if we, hello, there we go. If we do this. We can swap them about however you want to, but it's sort of lining this up. It's actually not got a left back to start on because, as I said, he is a young potential left back. Like he's not there built, but you know, he is going to be a good left back one day. So that's why I picked him up because I'm trying to bring in younger players that aren't as demanding when it comes to money. Basically, um, uh, there isn't much left in the transfer budget, but well, actually there is a bit. Actually, there's about two million. I'm not going to spend it. We have freed up some of the wage, and also, you know. We did spend obviously about 10 million, but we sold low, well, not a lot of it. We sold quite a bit, brought in a lot of money, got rid of some contracts. So, you know, we haven't made them worse off. Let's put it that way. So, our start on 11 is actually going to be um, to Stegen, Roberto, PK, or you've got Longley, Garcia, Zagadou, and Titi. Um, Araujo is obviously a brilliant centre back. You've got Dest at fullback, but I am going to be playing our new man who should be down here in Luca Nets. We've got Kessie and DM, Pogba, De Jong, Dybala, Dembele and Memphis. So a very, very solid team, if I don't say so myself. A very, very good team. And one thing I will be saying is that 
A PK, I did try and sell him, but no offers come in and he wasn't happy about being transfer listed. So I think he is going to be a player who we are probably going to see retire at the club. Uh, obviously, he is a legend at the club, but if I could have got anything for him, purely because he is not a, like a ridiculous amount considering half of what this squad's on. But I was going to offload him because he is 35, but he is still a decent centre back. So maybe it would have been, maybe it is a good um, result that he is staying for at least one season. But I'm going to go into the first season now, and I'm really optimistic about this. I genuinely think we can rebuild this club over five years because at the end of the day, it's sort of like, it's quite. The players that were on a lot of wage, like your Albers, your Busquets, still have interest from clubs. Like, oh, especially on this game, you've got PSG that always come in for those type of players. So we were able to offload Alba. We were able to offload um, Busquets. So I think it went to Shakhtar. And let's double check that. I'm pretty sure it was Shakhtar and PSG, right? Shakhtar and PSG. The reasonable figures as well. But let's get into the first season then and see how we do. And hopefully, possibly get this club out of a bit of debt. So that is the first season simulated. And I'm not sure what's happened because... We've been given 218 million. Now, I'm not sure what's happened. I know we've sold a lot of players. I'm hoping players haven't left mid-season as well. 100% um, of transfer revenue is now available to us as well. And also, we've got a next season budget of around 88. I was not expecting this type of budget, so I don't know if we've done really well. And I don't know what's happened, but let's go and have a quick look. Well, okay, it's first off the bat, I have seen this here, but I'm going to quickly point out we were literally a point off winning the league, which is very unfortunate because that would have been a quadruple in our first season. We win the Champions League, which was not expected with this squad against Manchester City. We obviously win the um, Copa del Rey there as well against Levante. Quite an easy final. And the Super Copa there against Bilbao. Dybala, our free sign-in, our top goal scorer with 44 goals. Highest match rating from Dybala, most assists from Dybala. So he is definitely going to be staying in the team. Jesus Christ, what a player. Over here then, we have, we're the best for scoring goals, second best for conceding goals, um, the best for yellow cards and the best for red cards. So nearly, nearly the best in everything in the league. And I was not expecting to do that well in the first season. Like obviously, we have got a decent team. Like This is a quick reminder of the team that we do have. Obviously, a lot of people are on holiday now. But... I was not expecting to come in and instantly win it. But if we go or win what we did, sorry, not the league. I know we didn't win the league. But if we filter this then by goals, it was already filtered. Dybala with 44. Fatty with 24. Griezmann on loan with 23. So possibly, how old is Griezmann? 32. Depending if we can get anywhere near that value, I might consider selling him still. Um, 19 goals from Pedri. 13 for Pogba. 11 for Kessie. And then 10 to, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Assists then, we'll filter by that. We've got 26 for Dybala, 20 for Fatty. Fatty having a very good season. Pedri have had a decent season, 16 from him. 14 from Memphis, 12 from Dembele. Dest popping up with quite a few, which is good. And to be fair, looking at the match ratings, a lot of our free signings are in here as well with good match ratings as well. Um, it looked like Pogba had a decent season. De Jong, had, I mean, he plays a bit more defensively, but... um. Not the most contrib not most contributions when it comes to goal or goals or whatever, but overall, a very, very decent season from him. But for a first season, I don't think we can complain at all. I think it's very good, obviously, winning three trophies, just about missing out on the title as well by a point. So overall, a very, very good season. And that leaves, as I said, with 218 million. I don't even know if we're going to be able to spend all that because I don't I do not want to get in the habit of purposely getting rid of people just to spend money but obviously there are people in this squad which are close to the you know, coming to the end of contracts that are a bit older i've been banging on about trying to bring in younger players and often as you see in real life younger players do cost a lot of money because obviously you clubs know that you're going to have them for years and you can make a profit on them um, i would like to say a lot of players that we are signing as well are forced to have a release clause in they all want one so um, at any point we could be stuck in a situation where one of our best players does get you know instantly snapped off us but let's get into season two of the transfers then and try and spend a little bit of this money. So let's get into season two of the transfers. Now, this one is going to be a big window. And the only reason why it has become a big window is because there's so many players that would not accept lower wage contracts. And obviously, you've got to, when you register your squad, I think there's about 2.9 million. The club can't afford high wages anyway. And at the end of the day, there were loads of players that I did have to get rid of. And with that budget, we have managed to bring in some world-class players. And what I've had to do is to offer them less money per week 
I've had to offer them more of an upfront signing on fee, which has worked. So we did sort of burn through that budget a lot quicker, but we have got some better players on slightly less money than probably what they'd usually take. But let's get in then to the first page, which is going to be, first off, right back position, because we were we lost Roberto. He didn't accept a contract and no one wanted him. So he went on the free. We also lost Braithwaite for 5.5. Ogba. Pogba wanted around £460,000 a week. Now, he was not getting it at his age, so I sold him to PSG for £51 million. A good bit of business. We got him for free, made £51 million. Not too bad. We then, um, similar um, situation for Pjanic and Aubameyang. Aubameyang, I just decided to move on. Didn't really want him. And Pjanic, again, wanted way too much for the quality of player that I saw him as. So if we go in then too, we've got Denzel Dumfries from Inter Milan for 6 million. Again, a fantastic player. Just this is the backup, obviously, for what we've got. Um, a very, very good option to have. That is definitely for sure. Not going to be the first team, but probably could get into a lot of first teams. But the main man here is going to be Reese James. And this guy, honestly, is something special. Obviously, one of the best English fullbacks you can get. And definitely a player that will fit into this team. And a player that I've never signed on Football Manager. So I really was interested to get him, use him, and see how he turns out. Obviously, it might not be the most typical Barcelona signing, but it was a player that I think could do very well at the club. And also, he was available. He wasn't happy at Chelsea. And, you know, he's only 23. So fantastic player. We then go on to the next page. And, you know, so 63 million sold here worth of players and 95 spent. Here is where we did spend big. And this is why I say this is the big one, because we're not going to have many more windows spending this amount. Because obviously, well, I mean, the finances for Barcelona, by the way, are still rich. So I don't know if we got taken. I don't know what happened there, but we, we managed to recover them. Um, but Griezmann, a player who wanted a ridiculous wage again, if we look at him, he is actually 32. He is a good player, but we're just not prepared to pay them wages because we could get this guy who was willing to take a lot less per week, a lot younger, and also a bit better. But he did go to Liverpool there for 55 million. But then we needed to, you know, add to the midfield. We lost a few midfielders. Um, obviously, um, managed to get De Jong, by the way, to stay. The way I managed to get him to stay was to offer him. He is on quite a high wage packet because he's one of the players which I don't mind paying a lot to have at the club because he is so damn good but we then go in and we get Nunes from Sporting for 51 million pounds a fantastic player a player that I probably do sign too much on my football manager rebuilds but it's because he's so reliable he's such a good midfielder as you can see very very well balanced attributes world class 24 years old and he never costs too much to be honest we then go to a player which I don't sign too often which is Renato Sanchez from Lille for 50 million pounds again he is actually described as world class there I probably wouldn't give him that title necessarily but he's a fantastic player and you'll see at the end of this I'm going to show you the tactic and the squad this guy gives us so much depth in the midfield man We've got such a good midfield going now. We really do. And this is by far the biggest sign. And this is going to be the striker for the entire save, obviously. We've got rid of a few strikers now. We've still got Memphis. We've still got Val Valavic. Always butcher that name. We've now got him in. And also, we do have Dybala, but he was playing a bit on the wing last season. But obviously, we all know who this guy is. Absolute world. He's so, so good. Elite striker. Um, 23-year-old. 18 finishing at the age of I mean at the age of 23 is ridiculous and this guy is going to be our striker for the entire save so I mean this is why I was happy to pay the amount that I paid for him and again a lot of these players did receive big pay pack not big pay packs big sign on bonuses because that was the way I sort of sounds bad but sort of bribe them to sign and take less money but if we go into the tactics then let's see what it says Best 11. Yep, so he goes right into the mix. Actually, it was to Stegen, James, Zagadou, Araujo, Dest, De Jong, Cam, Kessie, Pedri, Torres, Fatty, And obviously, you know, it's going to be the main man here. But then if you look at this bench, you've obviously got Neto, um, Garcia, Sanchez, Dybala, Longley, Nunes, Depay, Dumfries, um, Gavi, Abdi, um, PK, Dembele. I think that's Pug. Um, Bulde, Trinkau, Mtiti, and Mets, who is still going to be a left back that we are going to try and develop. Now, there are two players that I couldn't register because of money and because also it just doesn't work. And I've got to update this before we get into the season. Um, PK is retiring, so I'm not registering him. And also, I've got to decide between Longley and I believe Mtiti. I can't have one of them in. So I'm going to decide that and hopefully I pick the right player at the end of the day. But let's get into season two 
and hopefully replicate what we've done in the first season and possibly even win a league title. Before we do get into season two though guys, be sure to hit the like button on this video if you are enjoying it so far and be sure to drop a comment on what you think of the signings as well. And last but definitely not least, do hit subscribe if you enjoy my content enough. It really does help the channel. And if you want to get alerted for uploads, live streams, community polls, etc., etc., do hit the notification bell as well. But let's get into season two. So let's get into season two of things then. We've been given 229 million, nearly 230 there. The wage budget is looking very healthy, sitting at 4.3 million, nearly 4.4. The financial status is okay, so still on a decent sort of page when it comes to the finances. But let's see where we finish then. Wow, okay, so I mean 100 points absolutely above everyone else, that is for sure, this season. Obviously last season we were just a little bit short, but this season we come out on fire. And as you can see here, I've instantly seen this stat down here, which we will go into. But we also managed to win the Super Cup versus Arsenal, which is obviously before the season starts. We won the league and the Super Cup. Unfortunately, we do lose the Copa del Rey quarterfinals to Valencia and the semi-finals to Liverpool in the Champions League. We ended up also being the best goal scorers, sitting 107, and fewest goals conceded, only 23 conceded. But this stat down here is what we want to be talking about, because I mean, Balovic has come in and scored 56 goals. What a stat that is for him. Let's go into this and have a quick look. So we're talking 56 goals from him, 17 from Torres, um, 16 for Fatty, 15 for Pedri, 9 for Memphis, 9 for Kessie, 8 for Araujo, Dybala with 7 assists. We've got Dybala with 19, Reese James coming in, a big contribution with 11, Dembele with 10, Fatty with 10, Kessie with 10, and a couple of nines, few nines here actually. And I feel like everyone definitely, definitely coming together and it's not sort of like a, a one-man band, you know, one horse race type of thing. Everyone's sort of putting in a shift and at the end of the day, it's working really well. So, be fair, if we have a quick look, we're going to go into the schedule. Let's have a quick browse then. So, there's a lot of green in here, isn't there? There's a lot of green. A 1 0 loss here to Real um, Sociedad, that is, which is quite disappointing, but we bounce back in a way, which is out of this world. I mean, look at these constant results here. I'm um, a 0 0 against Bilbao, a 5 0 loss there to Chelsea, which is quite unfortunate. Very, very bad, actually. A 2 0 loss to Valencia there. Um, we actually, that's, we went, I mean, that's disappointing. We lost on penalties in the quarter final. Um, so not a good way to go out because obviously it is a team that we should be beating, I'd say, as well. Bayern Munich there again. We do manage to actually come back in that, which is quite good indeed. We give Dortmund an absolute thumping in the quarterfinals there in the second leg. And it's just unfortunate here. We, we failed to beat Liverpool on two occasions. So, I mean, to be honest, it, it is deserved that we went out. And, you know, it's not good, but plenty, plenty of room to grow. And one thing I will say is that we've got a ton of transfers off a ton of transfer offers coming in here I mean these two players here probably are on their way out I couldn't actually I couldn't register everyone so obviously there is a wage cap in this league and we have got the occasional player or the odd player that is on a lot of money per week so we do have to sort of factor that in a player like that is De Jong a player who's on a ridiculous amount per week but a player that I don't want to lose so it might mean that we do have to get rid of some of these higher paid players and bring in younger players and sort of develop them but overall I would say that is a very, very good um, second season into things. And I don't actually know where I'm going to spend this 229 million. Possibly one thing I might do is um, see who's on a high wage still. I feel like I've got rid of a lot of people that are on a high wage. But get rid of the people that are on a high wage that remain, like your MTTs, your long lays, and bring in some young prospects who obviously won't be on as much. That probably will cost a lot of money to bring into the club. But let's get into season three of the transfers and see who we can pick up. So we've just finished season three of the transfers and there's been a little bit of action going on. Obviously, I'm going to go through the people we got rid of. So obviously Griezmann did leave to Liverpool. I think that could have been even in the last season um, for £55 million. Um, Takashi and Nono went on the free. We offloaded Neto because we did we, we signed a better backup goalkeeper, basically. And MTT we did manage to sell to Bordeaux because he was on quite a lot per week. And he's getting older, no real progression and not exactly playing well either. Uh, we did actually bring in Kunde from Sevilla, which is obviously an incredible player. I had to pick him up when he was available. And the reason why I went for him over somebody like Bastoni or um, what's another one that's quite popular, like Upacano example, is because he's actually on 
He's only on 95k a week, which is really cheap, to be honest, of a player of his quality. Obviously, if we look at him again, tons of potential in him, great attributes as it is at the age of 25. And obviously, it also does weaken the team in the league. So there's a lot of reasons why I purely pointed towards him as a player. We then go and sign Onana. For only 10 million as well. Not exactly going to be our start of goalkeeper. He's happy with backup. But again, a very good keeper. Quite tall as well. And definitely better than Neto, who wanted to leave and would not sign a new contract anyway. So that's why we went and got him. The next phase does get interesting because I wanted a player that could challenge to start in the team on the wing, but also just be there for depth. Especially in the sort of Fernand Torres position because that is a player I'm closely monitoring because he's on a lot of money per week. And unless he starts to have real, real standout seasons, I'm not sure what his future's going to be. So far, he's been doing all right. But with the money that he's on a week, I want to be seeing incredible performances over and over. But we bring in Kuliveski from Tottenham for £93 million. Pounds. Now, quite an expensive player, considering he's going to be fighting for the first team. Obviously, he's very similar when it comes to Torres. Um, and it puts him a little bit better here when it comes to potential, but they are very similar. But this guy is on 145, and Torres is getting on for 225. So there's a lot of difference in the wage. And if this guy comes in and he does anything like he done on my Spurs rebuild, where he absolutely tore up the league, then this guy can definitely be first team. But a fantastic player, as you can see, very well rounded as well, and also quite tall. So a very good player to bring in. And if we quickly go on to this now and do best 11, it keeps Torres in there, which I was expecting. But Kunde goes right in. We've got to Stegen, James, Rauhal, Kunde, Dest, De Jong, Kessie, Pedri, Patti, Torres, and Valovic up top. We've then got Onana, Garcia, Dembele, Dybala, Longley, who we couldn't get rid of. Um, Renato Sanchez, Memphis, Dumfries, Nunes, Kulaveski, Zagadou, and a few other people down here. Now, I might end up having to release Longley because no one wants to buy him. And, the, you know, the wage cap is a big issue in this league. So if I can't register him, I may as well just get rid of him at the end of the day because last season I was this close to not being able to register some really key players. But let's get into season three and see how we do. So that is going to be season three simulated and we've been given a budget of £172 million, a wage budget of around £5 million. And financial status is still okay, obviously. We did spend a bit of money last season and depending on how we've done, we might even have to spend this. But hopefully we've somehow improved on last season. It would be nice to see... You know, I swing the title again at least. So let's have a little look. Wow, okay, so a lot closer this season round. Obviously, only five-point difference when it comes to that, but goal difference was in our favour by a lot. We've also managed to win the Champions League against Arsenal, so fair play to them for getting all the way to the final. We also win the Copa del Rey against Sevilla, and unfortunately, we were one game off, one final off winning the quadruple, and that is a shame because that would have that would, that would finished the season. Um winning all of the relevant trophies. Um, again, 58 goals from the main man here. Highest match rating as well. Pedri with most assists, probably showing that he's now breaking into that first team consistently and not being substituted off at half-time, etc., etc. We also, some impressive stats down here. We actually rank the best in every category. So 127 goals scored, 23 conceded, which is very low, hardly any goals conceded at all. 26 yellow cards, which is actually the best. Um, usually I'm known for picking up quite a few bookings, but in this save, obviously, you know, shout out RDF again for the tactic. We are using that because it is a Xavi based tactic and zero red cards. So very, very good there. But if we go into the squad hub and we'll have a little look here. So I've also added an injury column just to see if, you know, any players are going or possibly had injuries towards the later end of the season, because that will help explain some of the stats. If we go into the goals, then we've got Vlalovic there with 58. We've got Fatty with 26. We've got Pedri with 20. He had one hell of a season then. Memphis with 18. Dybala with 15. Araujo with 13. Torres with 11. Um, we've got Dembele with 11. Messi with seven. Um, I'm looking at. I'm trying to look for Kulaveski here. 29 assists for Pedri, which is incredible. 20 for Fatty. 13 for Dembele. 13 for De Jong. 11 for Vlalovic there. Memphis with 10. And where's Kudovesky on this list? Let's have a little look for him. Okay. He's not had the best sort... Why is he... He isn't getting played enough. 
That's why he's not getting played enough, which is a shame. Hopefully next season he does get to play a little bit more because he's a great player, but he obviously is not having enough game time, which is very unfortunate. But we've got some real key players in here, obviously. Um, I mean, I'll actually shout out Pedri because he's been really, really good this season, really contributing to the team. And obviously he does start, but he was getting brought off occasionally. But obviously, you know, he's really broken into that team now. And at this point going forward, I'm not entirely sure where to strengthen. Obviously, we have got the issue with... I'm uh, not an issue, but to Stegen is 33. Um, so at some point, we will be looking to bring in another real world-class goalkeeper ahead of Onana. We've always got this option at left back to upgrade from Dest. He is good, but we, we've got the money to go out and get like an Alfonso Davies, somebody like that. Other than that, our back, our back four is really good. De Jong's obviously top of the pile when it comes to midfielders um kessie again he is he's not exactly old we possibly could get a, you know i mean we could we could go out and sign anyone with this budget but i don't want to sign people just for the sake of it obviously we've got fatty on the left hand side who is world class wonder kid going to be one of the best in the save and on the right hand side we've also got great depth as well so and obviously up top we are not going to replace this guy the only thing i could think of possibly i mean die has actually still got a few years in him um so that's not too bad. We've also got the likes of Memphis Depay here as well, who is 31 years old. So, I mean, we've got a couple of aging players, but this, this next season, it might honestly be about signing one fullback. We might honestly have to offload our um, nets. Unfortunately, he's not developed into the player that he can do. So possibly bringing the left back and depending on what goalkeepers. But to be honest, I'm, I think I'm going to keep to Stegen for a little while longer because oh, his contract is coming up very soon. But hopefully he accepts another one. Obviously, no players have left, otherwise it would be saying here. But we've got 171 million, so let's get into the fourth season of transfers and see how we do. Before we do get into the transfers, though, guys, if you are enjoying the video, be sure to leave the video a like. Drop a comment below as well of any potential future rebuilds you want to see. And do hit subscribe on the channel and turn on notifications. It helps the channel grow, helps attract new people to the channel. But let's get into some sign-ins and see who we can bring in. So that's another season of transfers done. And I've done exactly what I what I said, basically. I have brought in a world-class left-back, and that is going to be Alfonso Davies from Bayern Munich for £100 million. Now, obviously, he is pretty much the best you can have. Obviously, Mendes is a very good shout as well. But I did go with um, Alfonso Davies because he has developed a little bit better individually on this save. And this guy's going to be with us for the duration of the entire save. I mean, the guy's absolutely fantastic. 24 years old. Fantastic attributes as it is. 19 pace on him 19 acceleration genuinely ridiculous for a left back also to be fair to him like all of his other attributes are also very good like his dribbling are good determination he's got a bit of flair which isn't really too important but it adds adds to the um adds something to him i guess but we did decide unfortunately i wanted him to work out because i know i said right at the start this guy is different gravy he's really good but unfortunately Luca Nets did not work out. Um, I've used him before and he was actually really good. I had him in a Leipzig save, but unfortunately he didn't work out. So we did let him go to Lille for 5 million. And also we finally managed to get rid of Longley, who was on a ridiculous wage. Wasn't really playing too many games either. Man City actually took him off us there for 36 million. So overall, Obviously, this guy was brought in last season, but we sold 41 million and we spent about 100. So, you know, overall, it's not too bad. We've actually still got loads in our transfer budget, but I'm not going to spend it because I don't need to. So, and also our financial status now is rich. So, you know, finances are definitely looking up. Going into like next season or next transfer window, obviously in the last season, I might look to bring in a couple of young attackers because obviously Dybala is on the way out. We've got Memphis, who's also mid-30s. And I have had to offer them contracts because I don't want them going on the free. But next season could be the real turnaround where we have to sort of put the, the, the whole point of this is to leave them with the best team possible at the end of five years. So that's what I'll do. But that is all I'm going to bring in for this window because I do feel like it's enough. We've still got great players in the team. And if we quickly do this, I always like to do this side of it now. Obviously, it's going to put Davies in there. So our back four now is probably one of the best back fours you can have. We've got Dion, Kessi, Pedri, Torres, Fati, and Vladovic. We've gone through this bench as well so many times. You can see the talent on there. It's absolutely ridiculous. But let's get into the fourth season and hopefully, possibly even do the quadruple. 
So, that is going to be the fourth season simulated. We've been given £215 million, £5.6 million on the wage budget. And honestly, to be honest, considering Barcelona's financial situation in real life, we've always been backed in the transfer window. So, I don't know if I missed a message about an ownership change or whatever happened. But to be honest, we've always had money to spend ever since the first season, which was a little bit tough. But... To be honest, it's probably because we're winning a lot and obviously we brought in some good players, so shirt sales, loads of stuff like that, obviously, that they factor in. And we've also offloaded a lot of players which were on the higher wages. And I feel like when it comes to transfers, I don't think I'll put a foot wrong. I think the only the only player that I possibly did mess up signing and it wasn't a lot of money would be um, obviously Mets, but he only sort of cost 10 million and we made five of that back. So, I mean, overall, definitely not too bad. Let's go and have a say. Hopefully, hopefully we won the league again. Wow. Okay. So we've won the league with a ridiculous goal difference. We've won the Champions League, won the Super Cup, won the Copa del Rey, and the Super Copa. We have won everything. Absolutely everything. And that is outrageous. Like, that is five trophies in one season. We were the best at scoring goals 143. 11 conceded. 11 conceded. That is next to no goals conceded at all. Valovic there, I always, of course, nearly butchered it. 59 goals from him. This guy has been so consistent at the highest level of football you can play. I mean, honestly, fair play to him because he's having one hell of a time at Barcelona. Pedri with 24 assists again. A player that is definitely cemented into that first team now. He, he was last season, but it's nice to see him actually really put his foot down and, you know, stay in the team. But I do believe if I saw this right... um. We were involved in some type of club um, World Cup, I believe. Yeah, so we actually did win this as well, which was the FIFA Club World Cup final against Bayern. So that's another trophy to this season. Absolutely ridiculous amounts of trophies. Let's quickly look into the squad then. So goals, no surprise there by Vlavic there with 59. Um, 34 for Pedri, 29 for Fatty. I don't think I'm giving this guy enough credit, Um, Nancy Fatty. He has been absolutely... Well, he's been out of this world. We've got Dybala still contributing to the age 32. Obviously, still quite young. Oh, well, I say young. It's not like ridiculously old, is it? 22 um, from him. Memphis with 15. Um, 11 for Araujo. When it comes to assists, we've got 24 for Pedri. Alfonso Davies, what a contribution. 22. Um, Fassi with 20. Dybala with 16. Valalovic there with 15. Frankie with 13. And... If we look at the match ratings, we've obviously got Valovic at the top there. We've got Dybala coming in shortly. And this is what I want to talk to you guys about now. So this is the last transfer um, window we're going to go into in this save. And I feel like it's the big one because I always like to leave the club in the best possible situation they can be in, in terms of a squad when I leave. So I am tempted to possibly move on um, Memphis because it's always Dybala that does outperform him each season. And I'm tempted to sell him. And bring in a slightly younger, um, sort of, sort of like a backup centre forward to obviously not overtake um, Valovic there because he's been really good, but just possibly just try and you know, even possibly bring in another young midfielder, someone like a Barella, someone like a Bellingham possibly because Kessie is getting on the older side, and I think you know, imagine if you had a midfield of like De Jong, um. Pedri and also you got the like obviously we still do have Gavi but he's not exactly developing as fast as what I thought so possibly you know Barella you know Pedri and De Jong but it's going to be a crazy window that is for sure we've got 250 million to spend and we are going to spend what we can and offload the players we don't need to try and finish this entire save because it's been an absolute we, we've done so well so far so hopefully in the last season we can really win everything once again hopefully and leave them most importantly with a great squad going forward but let's get into the last transfer window if you guys are still watching at this point drop a comment below on who your favorite football player is i want to get you know some, some of your opinions see who you think you know well who, who's the best player let's do that who is the best player in the world in your opinion but let's get in to the last transfer window so then guys this is going to be the final transfer window done and we brought in two players we didn't spend all of the budget and also unfortunately we couldn't move on memphis to pie and a couple of other players because no clubs wanted him because of his wage demands which obviously is one of the reasons why i want to get rid of him as well so it is it's always hard to get rid of them players so 
they are they are going to remain at the club but they just won't be getting as much game time and hopefully um obviously we're not going to be playing another season but ideally if i was going to carry on we could we could have offloaded them at some point but these are the players we brought in first off we do lose danny rodriguez there on the free but we bring in jonathan david from psg for 74 million and the reason i got this guy is because he can play anywhere across the front three and it's just about adding depth he's not really going to get into the first team as you will see when i select the best team but he is a good player for depth and he can cover any position and obviously we do have like with the intention of getting rid of the likes of memphis having this guy pre just you know pre-built there ready it's a great option to have another player i did want to try and replace because of his age was to Stegen, but again no clubs are interested in him so i've therefore stuck with him we've got onana on the bench and obviously if we this is going to be our last season but as i will say towards the end of this when we get to it there is going to be a lot of money that someone could have spent to you know reinvest in that goalkeeper position but then we also decide to bring in obviously what i think the best midfielder in the world he is the best midfielder in the world for potential for growth he plays like he's 26 and he's only well he's 23 on here but obviously he's 18 in real life and this guy is honestly incredible he cost us an absolute fortune he cost us 150 million and that actually took a lot of negotiating as well at that price but he is a perfect player literally incredible six foot one every single one of that every single attribute he has is a perfect perfect player he really is a perfect player and he slots into the team with ease it does mean kessie drops to the bench but if we go over to tactics right now our team is looking ridiculous we've got to stegen james araujo kunde davies de Jong, bellingham pedri torres fatty and valovic and obviously on the bench with the likes of onana garcia kessie memphis zagadu dembele dybala dest nunez david dumfrey sanchez kudovesky um Pueg, Bude, gavi and abdi and that is honestly a ridiculous team and i feel like the transfers have been, they've done i've done very well with the transfers if you you know go all the way back to the start of this video now and you look at some of the players that were in the club we have got rid a lot and a lot of the older players that were taking up a lot of wages There's only a few players who have i've not been able to get rid of which obviously are the likes of Memphis to buy because he is on quite a lot per week and obviously to Stegen I wouldn't put in that category because he's a world-class goalkeeper and he deserves it and obviously De Jong I didn't want to lose so I paid him what he wanted because he's again one of the best midfielders in the world but let's get into the last season and see how we do and hopefully go out with a bang so guys it's a new day we've finished off the simulation though we are done with season five and honestly this has been one of my most favorite rebuilds i think i've ever done it seems to have gone flawlessly even better than the tottenham one now i'm a bit annoyed this comes to an end because i really have enjoyed playing it i might even keep this save to play on the side someday but let's get into the last season and we have managed to wow we've managed to win everything we have won the league we've won the champions league we've won the super cup we've won the copa del rey and the super copper what a season we've won literally everything shout out leipzig as well for getting to the champions league final the real ones know that's that's my team well you know that's my team i'm um, valovic there with 69 goals pedri with 21 assists a Rauha with a 98 percent pass completion which is absolutely nuts so fair play to him and overall, what a fantastic season. What a way to end it. Let's have a quick look at this schedule then, because it's got to be all green. Oh, you are kidding. Wow. One game that we lose is to Atletico Madrid. And that would have been a completely invincible season across all cup competitions, friendlies, everything, apart from one game. What? How did we lose it? Oh, it was a, it was a rough one as well. Oh, Donny Marlon with the goal, but what a season that has been. If we go to the squad then, let's let's filter this by goals. Valovic there with 69. This guy is something else. 26 for Bellingham. Hell of a season from him. Contributing with 20 assists as well. 19 for Kulovesky there. What a player he has been. I mean, I loved him for the Spurs rebuild. I've loved him for Barcelona. 17 for Fatty. And we've got 15 for Torres as well. And if we go to assists, we've obviously got Pedri and Bellingham, two of the best young midfielders in world football in the same team. Honestly, sensational. We've then got 19 for Fatty, 16 for James, 13 for Kulovesky. We've got 13 for Alfonso Davies, 13 for Torres, and 13 for the star man here. And also De Jong putting up a pretty decent stats considering he is a DM. But 
by far, guys, please let me know in the comments. Do you think this is the best rebuild you have seen on this channel in terms of success and what we've won? Because we have left them one hell of a squad. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you guys now. So let's just quickly go over to this then. So this is the team that we finish with. So we've got Stegen, James, Araujo, Kunde, Davies, De Jong, Bellingham, Pedri, Torres, Fatty, and Valovic up top. On the bench, we've got Onana, Garcia, Kessi, Depay, Zagadou, Dembele, Dybala, Dest, Nunes, Jonathan David, Dumfries, Renato Sanchez, Kulaveski, Pueg, I think that's how you say that, Balde, Gavi, and Abdi. What a team I have left them. And obviously, there are certain situations I wish I could have, you know, possibly changed. Like, I wish that I could have got a replacement and brought in a new goalkeeper for Zestagen. But one thing I always like to point out is when I leave this, you know, when I, you know, finish doing these rebuilds, I always show you what squad I've left them but obviously if I was going to continue I would have 135 million to spend on getting a new goalkeeper so I've definitely not left them in a bad place when it comes to that but let's go over and you know we always do this and it is a, it's, it's a very fun thing to do we always go onto our profile here and let's look at the career milestones wow I mean this is going to be mental so hired as the Barcelona manager here in 2022 seems like ages ago now 2023 season, we managed to win the quadruple. We win the Supercoppa, win the Copa del Rey, win the Champions League, and win the Super Cup. So that was the first season. If you guys, you know, use your memory, you know, if you can't go back to the start of the video, we were so close to winning everything in the first season. But Barcelona just about edged the title. In the next season, it then ended up, it wasn't, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. Being honest, in terms of, you know, obviously what we had won, I mean, it looks a little less, but we did manage to win the league and we won the Super Copper. So still two big trophies, unfortunately not the Champions League. Then this is really the breakout season, isn't it? I mean, we entered the English Hall of Fame. We managed to win the Copa del Rey, entered the Spanish Hall of Fame as well. We won the league, won the Champions League, won the FIFA World Cup and won the Super Cup all in one season. Wow. I mean, that is some season. 2026 season then... I mean, it, it stays the same if not gets better. We win the Super Copa, we win the Copa del Rey, we entered the Worldwide Hall of Fame, which is a massive accomplishment. We won the league, we entered the European Hall of Fame, won the Champions League, and the Super Cup. I genuinely believe, and I'm not just blowing my own trumpet, I have turned Barcelona into the best team in Europe by a long, by a long shot. I have done a magical thing with this club, and this is why I genuinely think when I advertise this and I tweet this out, I will say this is the best because honestly, this is a sensational rebuild. It really is. We then win the Super Copper. We've reached the top of English Hall of Fame, which is a massive, massive accomplishment. We then also win the Copa del Rey, guided Barcelona to the fourth consecutive La Liga title. Now, you guys think about that. That is four back to back titles. Like four in a row we're talking about. Not slipping up once. And that is honestly one hell of an accomplishment. We then also win the um, the league again, obviously, because we got it into four. And the Champions League. So we have won this, this club an absolutely ridiculous amount of trophies. We've left them with one incredible squad. They're not too bad when it comes to the finances because they have got one hell of a team from it and they are better than when we first come in. Obviously, they have got they have got some players on higher wages, but then players are young and going to be at the club for ages and are winning them sort of four trophies a season. So definitely worth the money. Um, club info, we're talking training facilities, four and a half, youth four and a half, coaching, five-star youth recruitment sitting at four and a half. And obviously... Wow. We, last thing I will do, because one thing I always wanted to do, um, which I haven't been doing, I don't think, on my past rebuilds is, let's quickly just do a quick debrief on some of the players we brought in. Um, and, and, you know, took out, so obviously, probably this guy here is going to be one of our best signings. Obviously, this one we managed to bring in Pogba, Dybala, Kessi, Demir, Zagadou, Nets. Nets was the only player that didn't really work out. Obviously, this was the season where we offloaded Busquets and Jordi Alba. This is quite good because it's a little recap to, you know, where we were and where we are now. We then managed to bring in Denzel Dumfries and Reese James in one season, which is very impressive. A load of players here going. Obviously, Pogba wasn't here for too long because he wanted a ridiculous contract. But that's a good bit of business, isn't it? Brought in on the free, sold for 51 million. Um, this is the season where we offload Griezmann and the likes of Umtiti, but bring in Nunes, Sanchez, Vladovic, Kunde, and Onana. Again, one hell of a window that is there. We then also bring in Kulaveski and Alfonso Davies in a window. Obviously, sometimes these windows, the player comes in slightly before they get pushed back. 
obviously just this is the way it shows we offload Leng later Man City there which was actually quite a good deal because he was aging he wasn't playing well he, he wanted a high contract and we managed to get 36 million for him so overall not bad at all and then we all, this, this was one hell of a window as well that's what I mean every window has been really good we're bringing Bellingham and Jonathan David there and offload Danny Rodriguez on the free and that is it for the transfers but I would honestly say that has been a very, very successful rebuild. But let me know in the comments how you think I... And yeah, that is basically going to be it for today, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please do leave the video a like. It means a lot. It really helps the video get found as well. And if you do enjoy my content, you want to see more from me, please do hit subscribe and turn on notifications. It's the best way to be notified when I upload, when I premiere a video, when I live stream, and when I do a community post. And I never usually plug this, but if you guys do want to, you know, stay in touch a little bit more, maybe talk as well, be sure to check out my social media. It's all in the description below. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.